In a previous video, we looked at this compact CQ5720F and upgraded it from a dual-core Athlon 2 to the four-core Athlon 2 X4640. Overall, the performance was substantially improved, except when trying to watch videos on YouTube. I concluded that this issue probably came down to the integrated graphics, which, even way back in 2010 when this system came out, weren't really all that impressive. I tossed out the idea of potentially upgrading the GPU, but trying to find a buy one PCI GPU was going to be tricky. I kept my eyes peeled on local selling sites trying to find a buy one slot GPU, but nothing really came up. However, in that same video, I talked about this other PC that was in the trash found alongside the compact desktop. At one point, this poor computer was the Pavilion P6720F, which was actually released alongside the CQ5720F, but had slightly better specs. As I mentioned in the video, I originally thought this motherboard was dead, but after some more testing, it turns out it works pretty well. As does this power supply, although it's seen a few better days. There's no way I'd ever sell or give away this power supply for safety reasons, but for today, we're gonna go ahead and use it because it's the only power supply I actually have that's not in a system currently. The Pavilion motherboard is almost identical to the compact motherboard, but it has a few upgrades, like a more robust IO, two extra DIMM slots, and most importantly, this full-size by 16 PCIe slot that we can put a graphics card in. Before that though, I went ahead and cleaned up the motherboard using compressed air and some rubbing alcohol, and then I swapped out the Athlon X4 from our compact system and put it in this one. Now, we just need a graphics card. This is the AMD Radeon R7 240. This model has 2GB of DDR3 memory, and I picked it up on a local selling site for about $15. I would say that this was a pretty good deal, but the seller either hadn't noticed or just decided not to mention that the DVI port was completely snapped off. I really should have checked it out better before I bought it, but it was in a plastic bag, it was cold, and sometimes I'm just a little too trustful. Luckily though, I tested it and the HDMI and VGA ports work. The only issue was that the IO plate would swivel and wobble around, and I was sort of worried it might damage the HDMI port at some point. I briefly attempted to desolder a DVI port from another donor board, but my skills and equipment were not up to the task. I might come back to that later though. As always, I disassembled and cleaned up the R7 240 as well, and boy did it need it. It doesn't look too terrible from a distance, but this card clearly belonged to a smoker at some point, so I used a lot of isopropyl alcohol to try and get rid of as much of the dust, gunk, and smell as I could. It wasn't perfect in the end, but it was much better than when I got it. I also made sure to really tighten down the one lug that secured the I.O. plate to the PCB to try to keep it in place, and it seemed to hold up okay. With our graphics card ready, it was time to go ahead and assemble everything on my test bench, starting with the RAM. Here, I put two 2GB sticks in, but before testing, I went ahead and switched it to the two 4GB sticks I used in the compact testing. Next, I slotted in our GPU and then connected our poor power supply on the 20-pin and 4-pin 12-volt ATX connectors. Then, I went ahead and grabbed the 128GB SSD and a display, and we were ready to boot this machine up. Okay, now we're ready to boot this thing up. And after a successful Windows 10 install, I moved our test bench into my office and we are ready to go ahead and answer the big question. Would this $15 graphics card help with video playback on our old desktop? And the answer is yes, asterisk. You see, working on this project led me down the rabbit hole that is video codecs and trying to find out which graphics cards actually support them. I learned that YouTube primarily uses the VP9 codec now, which this GPU and the previous integrated graphics have no hardware acceleration support for. This meant that our poor old Athlon 2 was trying to do all the heavy lifting of decoding the stream. Adding the R7 240 helped quite a bit still though. The playback was a lot smoother and the GPU was at least being utilized some, around 25% or so, which brought our CPU workload down to the 70 to 80% range usually. Because my capture card only supports 30 frames per second, this causes some issues and also makes the video playback seem even worse than it actually is, so I used my phone to record some footage of the actual monitor I tested it on, and hopefully you can see that the playback is pretty smooth with only a few stutters here and there. While this was definitely an improvement, I still wanted to see if there was a way to better utilize our new GPU. That's when I found H264FI, a browser extension that forces YouTube to use the H264 codec instead of VP9. H.264 is supported on a much wider range of hardware, especially not-so-modern hardware. So I installed it, pulled up the same video, and wow. Night and day. Video playback was incredibly smooth, and while we would get an initial stutter or two immediately when the video would load, 
which clearly aligned with the CPU spike and task manager, we weren't getting any of the other stutters like before. But our GPU was also running at almost 80% utilization? Yeah, so it turns out the R7 240 doesn't include VCE 1.0 support, which is AMD's first version of hardware acceleration for H.264. This was pretty disappointing because trying to get clear information on which cards are and aren't supported is pretty tricky. But in reality, whoever is using a system like this probably isn't going to be doing much with their graphics card while also watching YouTube videos. So especially considering the card's minimal power draw, I really don't think this is a big issue. The CPU is freed up to do other things like load web pages, and playback is much better. So while I'm still including the asterisk, I would say that this upgrade was indeed a success. Adding a cheap dedicated graphics card into an old desktop is definitely not going to net you a sweet workstation or gaming PC, but for many people, being able to check emails, scroll Facebook, and occasionally watch some videos is all they really need in a PC. Something like a $15 R7 240, ideally not broken, might be able to breathe some life into a desktop that was most likely headed to the dump. As always, if you have any ideas on how we can use this hardware or other hardware in the future, leave it in the comments below. And if you've made it this far, it would mean the world to me if you could go ahead and hit that like button and maybe even subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.